key performance indicators. What are they and why are they important? A KPI is a tool used to track specific metrics of your data. This specific video has to do with KPIs for dropshipping and how you can use them to one, minimize your risk, two, increase your profit, and three, build a system. So now, let's get into it. What's going on everybody? Tanner here with another video. Hope you're all having an amazing and productive day. So right now what I'm gonna be doing is hopping onto my computer, onto an ad account, and showing you guys which specific KPIs that I'm tracking today in 2019 and the metrics that are really most important today, in my opinion, for Facebook ads. Um, you know, a lot of people just look at the basics or they use the default columns, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I set up and structure my KPIs so I know exactly what I'm looking for and when and how to make decisions for my ads to keep them going or to cut them off. So without further ado, let's hop onto my computer. So right here is an ad account. This is actually one of my students' accounts that I work one-on-one -on -one with, and this is actually a campaign for a brand new strategy that we've been launching, or we just launched literally yesterday, and look at how well it's doing. Eight row ads overall with $60 spent, which is amazing. So I'm not releasing it even to my core students yet, not even to like YouTube or anything, specifically just for people that I'm working with one-on-one -on -one right now, which is like three people. So right here, these are the default columns, as you can see. Um, that Facebook shows you automatically. You know, link clicks, video views, watch time percentage, you know, all of these different things, which are metrics that you can look at, but really it's just not organized at all. Like if I'm working with someone one-on-one -on -one and they show me their ad account and it's on default columns like this, it looks like a foreign language to me. I really don't understand. Obviously I understand it, but there's just things, it doesn't make sense. You know, why would I care to look at some of these things? They just don't really matter um, for what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for purchases, optimization, cheap cost per link clicks, all these different things. So let me show you these columns that I work with. And by the way, these columns I'm about to show you, this has been you know updating over time. Over the past probably year and a half that I've been using Facebook ads, you know, I started off just looking at like four things and now I'm looking at all of these. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna walk through each of the column steps right here and by the way for those of you that are gonna ask on you know how do I update my columns how do I change it um, this is how you do it you go to columns you go to customize columns and it's gonna show you exactly what you can choose and what you can add as well as all the other things that you can go through and choose from but all of these that I'm showing you right here are ones that I think are important and metrics that I use on a daily basis throughout all of my ad accounts so let's start from the top here obviously we have the ad set name and then obviously the delivery which is active you know these are some of the basic things um, um, but sometimes they get thrown around or messed around and thrown in different ways. You know, for me, I like to keep things as organized as possible. I don't keep everything in one campaign. I don't put every single thing in separate campaigns, but I like to focus on organization and have a structure for everything. Because if you're organized in your daily life, your ad accounts, everything, it's gonna be a lot more easy to be effective and efficient, which are the two things that I am constantly aiming for throughout my personal life and business life. Um, so the next thing, obviously, is going to be budget. And then the next KPI is amount spent. Obviously, another one of the basics, impressions, another one of the basics, but now we're getting into the real metrics. So we just went through those five KPIs right there, which are just the basic default ones that you always wanna have there. And now we're getting into you know some of the more fancy things that people don't really um, look at. So the CPM, which is cost per thousand impressions. Now you see how cheap these CPMs are, $2, $3. When average, you know, other people that are testing a normal way and using the normal strategy, they're getting you know, 20, 30, $40 CPM, which is ridiculously expensive. So I always, like to keep an eye on your CPM because you want to see how much you're spending per thousand impressions. So impressions is how many people have seen your ad over and over and reach is going to be unique people that have seen it. Um, but I just go by impressions because it's easier to look at. And the reason I use CPM is because I like to compare the ad sets within different campaigns. Obviously, we're just looking at one specific campaign right now, but I like to compare the overall campaign CPMs to see exactly what's working best and then focus in on that. And that's really the same strategy I go throughout. Um, for each of these indicators right here. And now the next one we're going through is the cost per link click. Again, I like to compare and contrast, you know, which ad sets, which campaigns are getting the better link clicks. Obviously these are pretty cheap and they're maintaining, you know, a consistent basis as you can see um, throughout pretty much all these metrics, they're pretty consistent except for these two ad sets here. Um, and the click through rate is basically showing how many people that see the ad are actually going through and clicking on the call to action button, which is a very, very important factor. So we're getting cheap link clicks, but that doesn't matter if we're not getting a good click through rate. So right here you can see again the consistency is pretty well throughout this entire campaign ranging from around 1.2% to 1.9 which is very very good. And now these next things are really just the funnel steps. You know going through link clicks, ads to cart, 
checkouts initiated, and then purchases. So those are the funnel steps that people are going through when they go to your store. So obviously we just looked at the click-through rate, but now we're seeing you know, actually how many link clicks we're getting and then averaging that out with our cost per link click. So link clicks are good. A lot of people get link clicks, a lot of people get traffic, but they don't actually get any sales or added carts or anything. Um, and a lot of people ask me, when should I cut off an ad set? So what I would recommend to you, at least for what I do, is if you have an ad set that's spent more than half of your break-even point without any ads to cart, then go ahead and cut it off because there's no true indicator showing that it may have potential to actually get a sale um, so as you can see right here add to carts checkouts initiated the funnel steps um, pretty good and you can see like right here how this ad set and this one have more checkouts initiated than ads to cart and that's because on the product page there's just a buy now button that goes directly to the checkout instead of having someone go to add cart and then check out um, because the easier you make it for your potential customer the easier it is to actually make a sale from that person um, so the reason why I look at link clicks add to carts and checkouts initiated and purchases is to see if there's any issues within my funnel process of going from you know people actually going to my product page all the way to the purchase phase of actually buying it and the cost per result is pretty obvious you know you're tracking how much you're spending per conversion and the reason you look at this is because you want to make sure that you are actually profitable which then I use this metric right here the purchase ROAS the return on ad spend and if we do the math here you know the $60 spent in this campaign with an eight ROAS is around $500 in return so obviously what you want to do is make sure that you're profitable using your cost per result KPI as well as the purchase ROAS um, now one thing you want to make sure you're doing before you actually start running ads and making sales or you don't need to wait you can just you know figure it out later on but figure out what your break-even ROAS so I believe what you have to do is divide whatever you sell it for, you, you know, whatever the product is, divide it by your margin number. Um, so let's say I'm selling a product for $50 and the margin is $20. If you do 50 divided by 20, that will be your break-even ROAS. So then when you're looking at your ad sets and your campaigns, you're going to be like, all right, you know, my break-even ROAS is whatever, let's say two. So I'm going to have to have a ROAS over two in order to be making profit. So these right here are all the KPIs that I look at on my ad accounts. And I recommend you do the same. Obviously, there's going to be other metrics that you can add in or take out. Um, but these are the fundamentals that I use fundamentally throughout every single ad account. Some ad accounts I'll add some different things just to check for, but these are the main fundamental things that I'd recommend you check for today in 2019 with your Facebook ad. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.